Sky Saints, welcome to the Life Church, amen. I want to take the time to welcome all of you to the Life Church. And also I want to take the time to wish all of the men out there, all of the fathers out there, a happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, amen. Let's, let's, let's praise God for all the fathers that are online and, and in the homes. We want to thank God for those fathers today, amen. This weekend, I had the pleasure of being a part of a men's conference uh, at Living the Word International in Slidell. The word was so good, I decided I wanted to share some of that word with you on today. Pastor Eddie Scarborough from Transforming Life Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, brought forth a powerful word. And I would like to share that word with you today. Well, I want to I want to pose a statement, which is actually going to be my actual theme for tonight. OK, my actual is going to be the title of what we're going to talk about. But it's going to be in the form of a statement. Uh, when the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plans. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hear you. When the man is in place, listen to that. It spoils the enemy's plans. Whenever we as men make up our mind that we are going to be in our place, we are saying that we're going to be used by God to spoil the enemy's plan. And that's what we've been called to do. We've been called to be used of God, not used by the enemy, but used of God. And, and, and before I get into uh, the real meat of what we're going to talk about, before I left the hotel tonight, I began to just think about when I was growing up in the hood. Everybody say the hood. <laughs> when I was growing up in the hood, we, we used to uh, do something that called, you can't get me off of my square. Yeah, yeah, man would stand in the square and we would draw a box around him and then you would have a couple of people come into that box and you challenge them that they would not be able to get you off of your square. In other words, I'm going to stay in this place. No one out here can move me out of my place. I wish I had some help in here. That I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be determined to be planted and rooted in my place. Glory be to God. So, yeah, we need to understand when the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plans. And it's nothing like being used by God to spoil the enemy's plans. Not to spoil each other's plans because we're on the same team. So we need to be determined that we're going to be men in place so that we can be used by God to spoil the enemy's plans. Regardless of what's going on, regardless of what's being reported every day, I'm telling you, there are still some mighty men in the land. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There are still some men that love God, love their family. Come on, love the calling, love the church. Come on, love the kingdom of God. And we will not be moved off of our square. We're going to be men that stay in place. When the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plan. Every man in here shout, God's plan for man is to stay in place. Yeah, God's man, God's plan for man is to stay in place, is to stay in place. Now, one thing about it is God has a plan for us, uh, but the devil also has a plan for us. So we're going to look at God's plan for man. I'm going to also show you that the enemy has a plan. A lot of times we say, I just want the plan of God uh, for my life. I just want the plan of God for my life uh, to, to work out. You know, we always talk about the plan of God. But we need to understand something. The enemy also is concocting the plan for our life. Okay? So what I want to do is uh, I, I want to show you God's plan, and then I'm going to show you the enemy's plan because it doesn't make sense for us to be good soldiers and just know what's going on in our camp and doesn't know what the enemy is plotting. Come on now, good soldier studies his opposing army. Glory be to God. So we're going to look at what God's plan is first. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, I think they're going to put it on the screen for me. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, in the New King James Version, this is what it says. For I know the thoughts. I want to change that word for a moment just for clarity. I want to say, for I know the plans. <laughs> for I know the plans that I think toward you, says the Lord. So this is God's plan for man. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. That's a good plan. To give you a future and to give you a hope. 
Glory to God. So, and God has several plans. We can go throughout the word of God and we can see several plans that he has for his man. Glory to God. But we also need to understand that the enemy, Satan, the devil, he also is concocting some plans. Uh, you know, he desires to sift us as we, to separate us, not only from one another, but from the body of Christ. He has a desire to sift us. So let's look at John 10.10. 10. Most of us in here, we read this before, but we don't want to take it for granted that everyone in here, every man in here, every woman, every child in here knows what John 10.10 10 has to say. So we're going to look at John 10.10 10 in the New King James Version. This is what it says. The thief does not come except. This is his only agenda. <laughs> come on now, we got we to gotta follow this. We don't have to read the whole Bible to find out what his plan is. This is his only agenda. And these are in the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus is telling us his only plan for man. And going again uh, to John 10, 10 in the New King James, it says that the thief does not come except to steal and to kill, and to destroy. That's his plan for man. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus comes along in this same verse, in a plan of God, glory to God. He's inserted another plan of God for his man, for his family, glory to God. He says right here, I'm going to read it from the top, the thief does not come except to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But God had to put a man in place. <laughs> and this man that, that's in his place is telling us why he came. <laughs> he says, but I have come. See, see the, the thief, the enemy, Satan came for something. And then he comes along and shows us what he came for. He says, I have come that they may have life. Come on now. And not only life, and that they may have it more abundantly. That word abundantly means to the full or till it overflows. Glory to God. Glory to God. So God, listen, God, God, God is showing us what his plan is after Jesus exposes the enemy's plan. So don't be moved by the enemy's plan. Focus in on what God's plan is for man. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the enemy's plan for man. I have come, the man in place, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Every man shout, I know my place. place. <laughs> Y'all got to follow me here. The devil knows when men are in place, things get built and rebuilt. The devil knows when men, this is family night, but the devil knows when men are in place, things get built and they get rebuilt. Come on, we, we are constructors. We are constructors of our family. We can, we can frame our own world. The enemy knows that when men find out who they really are, things get built and rebuilt. And that's, that's the enemy. The enemy wants to come against our building. Hallelujah. The devil knows when men are in place, things get built and rebuilt. Go to Nehemiah chapter 4 in the NLT. Nehemiah chapter 4 in the NLT. When the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plans. Nehemiah chapter 4, beginning with the first verse. Now, we're going to read a lot of scripture tonight. Because once again, we didn't come to play no games. Glory to God. And we're mighty men of the word. That means we're hungry. This is how we eat. Glory be to God. We will starve without this. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 4 in the NLT, beginning with the first verse. Uh, once again, the devil knows when men are in place, things get built and things get rebuilt. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1 says, Sanballat. I want to look at Sanballat as the enemy. I want to look at Sanballat as a type of Satan. Okay? He's an enemy to God's people. It says right here, Sanballat was very angry. When he learned <laughs> that we were rebuilding the wall. Right. 
the enemy became very angry when he found out that some mighty men of the word was going to gather tonight and we were going to have a tenacity to rebuild our families, to rebuild, come on now, to rebuild our communities. Come on, somebody. He, he, he got upset because he found out that we were gathering together to build and to rebuild. Because we're men in place. When the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plans. So the reason why San Bala got upset is because he found out that there were some men in place that came together to build and to rebuild. So now he's upset. Now, now he's trying to concoct something to stop us from building and rebuilding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. San Bala was very angry when he learned that we were rebuilding the wall. And I began to think about walls. What are walls used for? Walls are used to keep things out and keep things in. And when it comes to our family, we're going to make sure we fortify our families. Because there are some things that we need to keep in and there are some things that we need to keep out. <laughs> Come on now. There are some things we need to make sure doesn't get into the camp. But we also need to make sure some things that stay within the camp. Hallelujah. Walls are significant. That's why men are builders and rebuilders. Glory to God. And we need to make sure that we are men in place. When the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plan. When man or when men are in place, we can do whatever we put our mind to. Talk to me, man. When men are in place, when men have the right mindset, we can do whatever we put our mind to. My favorite scripture, my wife will tell you, my favorite scripture in the Bible is Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. That's an act of our own will. He didn't say, I'm going to make this mind. He said, you have to let this mind, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. So that means when we take on the mind of Christ, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. As Jesus is, so are we where? In this world. Well, how is that going to happen? I have to let this mind. In order to be like him, I have to have the mind of Christ. I have to lose my mind, take on his mind. Glory to God. If I'm going to remain being a man in place, he was a man in place even to the death of the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory be to God. He even told his mother, it's not my time yet. He knew his place. <laughs> Hallelujah. He could have called a legion of angels to take him off the, off the cross. Hallelujah. But he said, not my will. Not my will, but thine will be done. What was he saying on that cross? I'm a man in place. How, glory be to God. <laughs> glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when his father forsook him, he stayed in place. <laughs> I know what I was born for. I know why I'm here. I know what my purpose is. Glory. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It says right here, when men are in place, we can do whatever we set our minds to. Now, I want to read verse 1 and go into verse 2 again. Sam Ballard was very angry when he learned, he found out something, that we were rebuilding the wall. He flew into a rage and marked, and mocked the mighty men of, of valor, the mighty men of God. Hallelujah. He mocked them. He mocked the Jews. Verse 2 saying in front of his friends, ah, and the Samarian army officers, what does this bunch of poor, feeble Jews think? Coming out to their thoughts. What do they think? That's the play. We can, we can do whatever we put our minds to, but the enemy comes to attack what we think. How we think. We're going to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. It was nothing that Jesus couldn't do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says right here, saying in front of, of, of his friends and the Sumerian army officers, what does this bunch of poor, feeble, I'm going to say mighty men of the word, he's trying to down us, think? What are they thinking? They're, what do they think that they're doing? And then he goes on to say, do they think? The thoughts, messing with the thoughts. It's up on the screen. Do they think? Do they, do they think they can build? What do we think we can do? Do they think they can build the wall in a single day by just offering a few sacrifices? I believe we can do it if we offer some sacrifices. I think we can do whatever we put our mind to if we offer some sacrifices. Listen, men that are in place don't mind making sacrifice. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll make a sacrifice in a minute because we understand that we're men in place. We're called to do something great. Our families are depending on us. Our community is depending on us. God is depending on us. Glory to God. We have to put our mind to it and stay in place. And then he goes on. Adds a little more sauce on it. He says, do they actually think? <laughs> See, that's what he come to attack our thinking. Don't want us to think. Don't, don't want us to think about what we can do. Once again, I can do all things. That's how I think. Nothing is impossible to me. That's how I think. Glory to God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's how I think. Glory be to God. I live under an open heaven. That's how I think. Glory to God. Blessings and increase. They follow me all the days of my life. That's how I think. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's how I think. Glory to God. He's going to come for the thoughts. As a man think it. In his heart, so is he. Well, I think that I'm a man in place. <laughs> so if I think that I'm a man in place, I'm in place. <laughs> I'm not going to get off. You can't move me off of my square. Two of y'all can come, and I'm going to stay on my square. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Do they actually think they can make something of stones from a rubbish heap? See, now he's trying to mark, mark the family and charred ones at that. That house just messed up. They, they ain't going to make it. That thing burned. They might as well go ahead and burn that thing down, man. Every time you turn around, they're arguing. Their kids don't even like to come home. See, he tried to put these thoughts. No, no, we have a beautiful family. My children love to rise up and call me blessed. Glory to God. My, my, listen, my wife, she honors me. Glory, I honor my wife. Hallelujah. It's nothing but peace in my house. Hallelujah. Come on now. You see, see you got to start prophesying to your own camp. Because the enemy will start trying to speak into your ear and tell you what your family is like. No, the devil in hell is alive. I'm going to tell you what my family is like and who my, we are the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When men are in place, we can do whatever we put our minds to. We're some powerful people, man. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm talking to the right man. I said we are some powerful people, man. And the enemy wants us to direct our power and our authority in the wrong place. But we got some mighty men of the word in here. We're going to change this state. People are not going to be getting shot on the freeway. Come on, come on now. Come on. See, see, don't, 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 don't patty cake that now. Don't patty cake that now. Listen, listen, listen. This meeting is not just about this area. What, what's going on in this meeting is going to affect those back in my town. Those that are in D.C. and Maryland, glory be to God. Those that are over in California. This thing is going to go beyond just living the word sanctuary. Because we're going to be men in place because we found out something. When the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plans. And we got to have a righteous indignation. We have to get angry about what the enemy is trying to do. If you notice, things are going awry and it's all on the watch of the man. I can say it. Okay, Mo. The reason why so many things are casting off restraints is because the man has. Oh, <laughs> the reason why everything is running wild is because the man has. I'm saying I'm generalizing it now. That's why we have to make sure we think right. That's why we have to make sure we get back in our proper place. Hallelujah. The reason why the fall of man took place is because the man was out of his place. It wasn't about the woman because she gave the fruit to her husband who was with her. He, he's, it says who, who was with her. Now, do you all believe the word? He was there with her. He didn't stand his ground. Now, I don't know about you, but when confusion try to come into our house, we, we do physical acts. 
When confusion try to come in, anger try to come in, division try to come, we physically open doors. So devil, you got to get out of here. I start kicking. Come, come on now. I, I'm going to kick your tail. Come on now. Back 30 years ago, I would have said something. I'm going to kick your tail, you know. I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, filled, fire baptized, tongue talking now. Yeah, but see, see, I hadn't lost my gangster in the spirit. We got to be men in place. Because the enemy don't want us to think on another level. He doesn't want us to know who we are. <laughs> That's what that book is about, the real you. <laughs> Your God-given identity, men and women and children. Hallelujah. Do they actually think they can make something of stones from a rubbish heap? All that trouble in that house. Heap and charred ones at that. It, 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 it looks like it's no, you can't do anything with it. Here's another one. Men that are in their place are not distracted by instigators. Because it's not just going to be the devil. Now you got these little imps. They come to instigate to you. Uh, so we, as men of God, men that are in their place, we are not distracted by instigators. Because we realize one thing, because we can think now, we have the mind of Christ now, we realize that the, the, the instigator comes from the same source. <laughs> We're not fighting against a different army. They come from the same place. They have the same commander in chief. Now they're just instigating, they're just echoing, they're parakeeting what their chief has said. <laughs> Glory be to God. But men that are in place, we're not distracted by instigators. You know, when you think you got an edge on it and all of a sudden you still hear that chatter in the spirit. No, 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 that's when you got to make sure that, listen, you, can, you can't, it's okay to read the Bible, but you got to have downloads. And in, in, in the moment that you don't, you don't have time to open up the app. You don't have time to go find the Bible and flip open the pages. You got to have some downloads. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. They got to come up out of you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, Tobiah, and, to, Tobiah the Ammonite who was standing beside him remarked. That go to instigator. That stone wall would collapse. That house will collapse. That family will collapse. That marriage is going to collapse. That church is going to collapse. That community is going to collapse. That stone wall would collapse even if a fox walked al along the top of it. So now you got the, the voice of the instigator trying to speak stuff against your life. That's why you got to be a man in place. You got you to be able to hear in the Spirit. Not just what God is saying. When you can hear in the Spirit, you can also hear and decode what the enemy is trying to say. Come on, somebody. Come on in here. See, we always talk about hearing in the Spirit, and we think it's only God talking. No, no, you'll be able to cut some stuff. Come on. You'll be able to cut some stuff off in the Spirit that the enemy is spewing out over your family. Glory be to God. Speaking to your children, telling them that you don't like them. Daddy's never here. <laughs> Come on now. So we got to be able to decode some things. A man that knows how to hold his position is a prayer warrior. Shere bakrushete makataya. See, but you got to get to walk with it. Come on now. You got to, it's the foolish things of the world that will confound the wise. What are you talking, what are you saying? I don't know, but I know I just prayed the perfect prayer. I, I know that when I come out of here, everything in my house, everything in my family, everything in my marriage, everything in my community is going to line up with the word of God. Sheke lele bakaya. Rimo Soto, when I'm driving to work, shame my car. I don't have time to be listening to all these comedy shows while I'm driving. I got to turn off the radio, Sheke, Mokoko Oro Basai. By the time I turn back to this place, everything going to be in order. We got to learn to prophesy to our day. 
We're blessed in this day. My family, we're blessed. We're increasing. We're advancing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. A man that knows how to hold his position is a prayer warrior. Verse 4. Then I prayed. <laughs> when I saw him attacking my family, then I prayed. When I saw him attacking my marriage, then I prayed. When I saw him trying to get my son off, then I prayed. When my daughter started doing all kind of crazy stuff, then I prayed. When my money started looking funny, then I prayed. When I found out what the enemy was concocting, then I prayed. I didn't complain, I prayed. I didn't start cussing, I prayed. I didn't start fussing, I prayed. And then I prayed. And I didn't pray what I wanted to pray. I prayed the word. See, we're mighty men of the word, right? So what do we war with? We war with the what? We war with the word. And, and when we war with the word, we're going to be sure about our outcome. There's no way you're going to war with the word and end up losing. When you war with the word, it's a fixed fight. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm not bringing him down, but, you know, to me, God is just like Don King. Got quiet in here. If you a fighter for Don King back in the day, when you stepped in the ring, you already know you won. <laughs> you know, I'm just, it's a parallel. Come on now. Most people that, 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 that saw his fighter already knew that his fighter was going to win. Why? Because it was a what? And Don's still around here just like he ain't fixed nothing. He didn't fix all of them. Glory to God. It was, and that's what it is for us. It's a fixed fight. And those, those boxers get in there, they be confident. Because they already know I'm going to walk off for 50 million. It's a fixed fight. And then listen, even the ones that he had to fix it to lose. <laughs> they were like, yeah, I'll, I'll lay down, Don. I'll lay down. <laughs> they knew it was what? It was a fixed fight. Fight. We always win. Say that. Say we always win. Man, that sounds so good. Nothing but the men. We always win. That's authority. Say it again. We always win. See, the enemy can't stand that sound. Say it again. We always win. Say it again. We always win. See, that, see, see we, we have to know that on the inside. We have to know that on the inside, that we always win. Verse 4, then I prayed, hear us, our God, for we are being mocked. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may they themselves become captives in a foreign land. See, we don't like to pray these kind of prayers. <laughs> we got to return back to praying these guys. See, we want to we wanna like everybody. We got to start praying these prayers. You know, seal their tongue to the roof of their mouth. <laughs> oh, that ain't love. The devil in hell is a lie. I'm praying the word. Well, no, no, Jesus is love. Yeah, okay, all right, okay, all right. No, we're mighty men of the word and we're tolerating stuff. We're living in a time where man is saying right is wrong and wrong is right. <laughs> We're supposed to be the one handling this country. Yes, sir. Not the politician. Yes, sir. Oh, come on now. Come on now. No, no, don't, don't do me like that. I'm talking about men, blood washed, born again, believing men. We're supposed to be the one running this. Because when men are in place, we spoil the enemy's plans. So why does it look like he's just doing what he want to do? Because a lot of men, I guarantee you, in the next 24 hours, if every man in this country wake up and take his rightful place, Everybody wake up on one accord and take our rightful place in the morning. This whole country 
would change. Racism would be done no more. Black on black shootings would be no more. Mass shootings would be no more. <laughs> oh man, we have a revival in the church. But see, what's happening is what we're doing in this building, we're building something that's going to be infectious. Like Pastor uh, Lawrence said, I got the, I got the uh, 999 or whatever, the, the other 999 men. That, that, that's real deal. Yes, sir. Every last one of us should have 999 men attached to us. That mountain won't be able to hold us. Oh, y'all didn't hit me. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't hear me. It'll be so many of us up on that mountain, that thing will, be, will turn into a molehill. It won't be able to hold us. And everything on that mountain will be able to be, begin to reside throughout the whole country if we get men in place. Are y'all all right? Then I prayed, hear us, our God, for we are being mocked. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may they themselves become captives in a foreign land. Do not ignore their guilt. <laughs> Do not blot out their sins, for they have provoked you. Oh, when you mess with God's man, you don't just provoke his man, you provoke God. To the point, boy, you, got to tell, you don't want me to say that, man. Because if I open my mouth and say that, <laughs> boy, if I, you don't want me to send out that clarion call. When I open my, if I, if I summons him now, if I summons him, <laughs> I'm going to have to turn around and pray for you. Now, see, I, 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 I've, I've had that happen before. I had a man that come, came up against me in the church and immediately lost his hearing. Touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. See, you are, you are God's anointed man. I got a witness right here. Instantly, I said, brother, you don't want to do that. He started talking against me in my office. Boom, instantly he lost his hearing. Ran out the church. Ran out the church. How am I going to get my hearing back? I said, bring him back to church on Sunday, and I asked God to give it back to him. He came back to church the next Sunday. Boom, prayed for him. God gave him his hearing back. See, 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 boy, everybody looking at me like, what? See, that's the power that you have. It's not like we're trying to hurt anybody, but he said, touch not my anointed. And you are God's anointed. You're God's mighty man. We got to know who we are, the real you. That's why your family going to be better. We're going to learn to listen more. We're going to be better communicators. We're going to make sure things are in order, man. I'm getting off a little bit, boy. But I'm too, ooh, Jesus. Verse 5, do not ignore their guilt. Do not blot out their sins, for they have provoked you, you to anger here in front of the builders. Now, I told you that men are builders and rebuilders, right? So now you provoke God to anger <laughs> in front of his man. When you mess with his man, when you mess with his man's family, when you mess with his children. <laughs> Real men work and serve with enthusiasm. Amen. Good. Yes, Real men work and serve with enthusiasm. We have, we, listen, the same enthusiasm we had when we were worshiping tonight, that's the same enthusiasm we have when we work and we serve. When God calls us to the forefront, even not, listen, I'm not just talking about in the community. I'm talking about when we work and serve our family. When we serve our family. Don't treat your children like they're slaves because you're paying the bills. Before they go to bed at night, instead of them bringing you a glass of water, <laughs> you, go, you find out what they like before bed, and you go in there and you serve them. Do they want to hear a story? Get you some little hand puppets and come up over the bed and say, it's time for bed now. <laughs> boy, you talk, boy, listen here. Now, let me help y'all, man. Uh, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to wash dishes. <laughs> 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 
See, when you wash dishes, let me take a, let me take a moment. Man, I'm trying to help y'all. Because we, we might have been in the world. We're, we're men in place. When you wash the dishes, make sure you get all the food off the dishes first. We ain't talking about, we, we, I'm going to say it like my grandmother used to say it back in Alabama. We ain't talking about ranching the dishes. We talking about washing the dishes. <laughs> it's a difference. You got to, them big old muscles you got, you got to use them, man. But, but I'm going to show you how to wash dishes. When you wash the dishes, you wash the dishes, you put the dishes in the dryer, in the little dish, dish, dish uh, strain or whatever. But one thing that you, if you really want to get on your wife's good side, and you want everything to happen well tonight. <laughs> when you finish washing the dishes, I'm finna get, this is going to be real deep. Make sure you take the towel and dry the sink. <laughs> Boy, that, it's the little things. Take that towel and dry that sink out. And then if the faucet, if, if the faucet act like you want to drip another drip of water, you got to get that. Too. You have to stand back and look at that faucet like, don't you do it. It's the little things. It's called serving. It's called serving. Am I all right on time? Real men work and serve with enthusiasm. Verse 6. At last the wall was completed to half its height around the entire family. <laughs> around the entire city. For the people, for the men, had worked with enthusiasm. That's when, things, that's when you start seeing results. Men, when we use some enthusiasm when it comes to our family. When it comes to us serving and working, we start seeing results. When, we, when we're lazy with it, things don't happen. Everybody else around you is not even excited. So you have to do it with some enthusiasm. When I, every time I come to this church, I see people serving with enthusiasm. It has to spill outside the four walls of the church. It has to spill over into our house. See, because we, we don't want our family to be mad at the church. <laughs> when you have more enthusiasm in here than you do over there. Come on now. You got to have some balance. Because if you have enthusiasm over there, you definitely going to have enthusiasm over here. Yeah. Why you think that now the kids don't even love God? Because they think that you love God more than you love them. Hmm. <laughs> Boy, I got quiet in this. No, this is not that. This is a blessed church. The man that takes his rightful place infuriates the enemy. I don't know about you, but I used to love making my enemies mad. <laughs> and some of us, let me get an amen. Y'all know y'all do. <laughs> Kill him, Jesus. <laughs> well, you know their son was in an accident. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my prayer working. No, 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 man. No, that ain't, that ain't God, bro. That ain't God. The man that takes his rightful place infuriates the enemy. Verse 12, I got to move. But when Sanballat, here go those, here, listen, here go those instigators again. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard, now, now he's gotten some friends to come against your house. Heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps <laughs> in the wall of Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the type of home, is your home, that's the home base. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Jerusalem, Judea, to the uttermost parts of the world. We got to learn to take care of Jerusalem before we can go to Judea and into the uttermost parts of the world. How are we handling the walls in Jerusalem? Yeah. Oh, man, this is this family night, right? See, 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 because we're builders and rebuilders, so we got to make sure that Jerusalem is fortified. And when Jerusalem is fortified, now the community will be fortified. Now the world will be fortified, okay? 
Yeah, but when Sanballat and Tobiah and, and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall in Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. <laughs> the man that takes his rightful place infuriates his enemy. I got to move. As a man, it is my responsibility not to allow confusion to dwell in my family. Talk to me, men. I'm going to read that again. As a man, it is my responsibility not to allow confusion to dwell, to tabernacle in my family. It's my responsibility. Anytime confusion show up, I need to tell it where to go. I need to handle that. I need to deal with that. Come on now. I need to make sure. We, we, see, when we lie down, we need to lie down in peace in this house. And, and when we lie down and when we're, when we're dwelling together in this house, we all have to be on the same page. The wires can't be tr crossed. There can be no confusion. Verse 8. They all made plans the enemies. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem. Stay with me now. They all made plans to come and fight against your house. The enemy is making plans right now to come and fight against our house. <laughs> they all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. <laughs> but we prayed. <laughs> there it is again. But, woo, we prayed to our God and guarded the city, guarded our house, day and night, and protected ourselves. Come on, somebody. When men, when the man is in place, it spoils the enemy's plans. <laughs> Men, we have to be okay with asking for help. This is one right here. This is a kicker right here. As men of God, in our place, we have to be okay for, with asking for help. I'm going to show you right here. Verse 10. Then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers, the builders, the rebuilders are getting tired. And there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. And men, listen, that's, what, that's why we're gathering here. Listen, we have accountability partners. We, you need to find other men that you can, you can call and you can, you can bounce things off of if, if you feel like you're off a little bit. Come on, you have to be okay with, be, be honest with me. What do you see? Uh, how do you handle such and such? And I know every house is different, but we all can glean from one another. We are, we are very stubborn when it comes to asking for help because we want everybody to think. I, I, I got this. No, man, you're making a mess out of it. I, see, I, I have what I call my power five. Got one of them sitting right here. There are five men that I'll call. My apostle being one, and then I got three other people that I call constantly. Because I realize that sometimes I need to ask for some help. And I don't need to, I don't need to have men that's going to lie to me just so we can stay cool. We were in Vegas on vacation last year, and boy, I was going, to, I saw this new designer and stuff, and Pastor Lawrence said, man, that looked demonic. I'm like, but I like this designer, man, it's fresh. He said, man, that looked demonic. I went back and looked at it again. I said, you know what, he's absolutely right. Wow. Dropped that, dropped it right then and there. I couldn't have my pride, man, you ain't going to tell me what to buy. No, he saw something I couldn't see because I was looking at the, the glitz and glamour of it. He looked deeper than I did. Come on, somebody. Come on now. I could have took that into my house and be trying to figure out why all this hell breaking loose. Because you done brought the devil stuff up in here. Man, I went back in and, looked and started looking at that stuff online. I said, man, he absolutely right. And God began to show me where stuff was already like, like hidden codes and stuff within the design. He started showing me people that were wearing this designer in their lifestyle. I went and researched it. I said, you know what, this man of God, he's not going to tell This is my brother in Christ. He's, he's not going to tell me anything wrong, but I, was, I just wanted to find out. I said, I'm going to go and find out. This, this is totally demonic. Now, I could have got the big head and said, man, you ain't going to tell me what. I'm going to go ahead and buy this anyway. 
And then like, like this year, this time, I might not even be here standing ministering the gospel to you because I could be so jacked up because I didn't have somebody to help me. And we got to learn to drop our pride. <laughs> I don't want no yes men around me. Don't you ever do me like that. If you see something in me, you get in my face. Help me. Offense is one of the biggest killers of the family. Because it moves us out of a place where we can get what we need for our family. Pastor said, some men come to his church, if they came, he'd probably send them back. <laughs> I was like, no, you know, you know he's, he's right about that. Because we need to be able to swallow our pride. I need help, man. Yeah. I don't have it all together. If you got a problem with pornography, you ought to have a man that you can go to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why did it get so quiet? Yes, you ought to have a couple of brothers that you can be transparent with if you're having some issues. Because we can't talk to our wives about everything, but we need to have a few godly men around us that we can call that's not going to take our side. <laughs> that's going to tell me, you know, you need to listen to Val. Mm. We have to be okay with asking for help. Verse 10. Then the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired, and there is so much rubble to be moved, we will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. That's why we need to ask for help. If you get rid of the man, you can stop the vision. I'm going to try to get through this. I don't want to make this eternal, because we're going to have a great time on tomorrow as well. Amen? If you get rid of the man, you can stop the vision. The vision will actually stop. If you take every man out of society, I'm talking about every age, every male child. If we, if we woke up tomorrow and every male child was gone, th that would be the end of society as we know it. But people might say, well, what if you get rid of all the women? I'm, this is we're talking to the men now. <laughs> we, we know it will be the same thing. We'll be around here keep probably killing each other. But what I'm saying is <laughs> if you got rid of every man right now, Society would, would, would cease to exist, okay? Verse 11, meanwhile, our enemies were saying, I'm going to have to speed up, before they know what's happening, here we go, here we go, before they know, the sneak attacks, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work or get rid of the vision. We'll swoop down on them because they're not ready, they're not praying, they're not worshiping. They're not before the face of God. We're going we're to do a sneak attack. They're they not ready. They're not men that are in place. So we'll swoop down and we'll, 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 we'll kill them and we'll stop the work. We'll stop the vision. That's why we got to make sure that we always stay in our place. And we always stay on God. I'm going to have to move real quick. As men, it is our job to protect the exposed areas in our family. <laughs> It's, it's our job to protect the exposed areas in our family, uh, those areas that are vulnerable. You know, you don't go down to the, I think Pastor Lawrence was talking about this in this past week at Mighty Men of Valor. Uh, we don't go to the barbershop. <laughs> Things are already exposed and you talking to people, they, they couldn't pray their way out of a wet paper bag. And you up in, there, in the barbershop telling somebody their house messed up and you telling them about the exposed areas in your family. And then all of a sudden you walk out of there feeling worse than you did before you went in there. You walk out of there with a warped mind. You're not thinking right. You don't have the mind of Christ. You need to surround you. You need to find you a Holy Ghost field barber. While he cutting your head and shaving your head, shede bakasatai. Come on now. He'll sense what you're going through. Come on now. <laughs> you, need, you need a barber that's, that's spirit-filled. That when you come in there and you got an ailment in your body, he'll start praying for you before he just take your money. <laughs> I'm telling you. Supernatural. But as men, it is our job to protect the exposed areas in our family. Verse 12. The Jews who live near the enemy came and told us again and again. These are our own people, but they're getting word. 
They will come from all directions and attack us. So I placed armed guards, men in place, behind the lower, lowest parts of the wall in the exposed areas. Men in place. I stationed the people, the men in place, to stand guard by families. Whoo, Jesus. Armed with the sword of the Spirit. I put that in there. <laughs> Armed with the sword of the Spirit. I, I saw that. I just saw that. Spears and bows, okay? Ver, I, 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 gotta, I gotta move, y'all. When it comes to our family, fear can't be a factor. I refuse to fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. That's why it's not gonna be any confusion up in here. A number of power, love, and sound mind up in here. No confusion, nowhere. No fear here. We feed our faith, we starve our doubts to death in this house. <laughs> Come on now. Verse 14. Then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people, men in place, and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. <laughs> Glory to God. Remember the Lord. <laughs> See, that's what we got to do. That's what your mind, you got to remember the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your family, your sons, your family, your daughters, your family, your wives, your family, and your homes, your family. Fear can't be a factor if we're going to handle this family thing. This weekend, the enemy will be exposed so we all can return to our position. Thank you for that one hand clap. Hallelujah. Let me read it again. Maybe I get somebody else. This weekend, I know they type it. This weekend, the enemy will be exposed so we all can return to our position. Hey. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Verse 15, when our enemies heard that we knew of their plans <laughs> and that God had frustrated them. Boy, the enemy get frustrated right now. Yeah. Not, not, no, he's frustrated right now. R-A-T, rat. <laughs> when our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to our work on the wall. All right. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's time to go to work, man. When men are in place, all bases are covered. Verse 16. But from, from then on, only half my men worked, while the other half stood guard with the spears. But see, every man's still in place. we just in different places. Come on now. Shields, bows, and coats of mail. The leaders, men in place, stationed themselves behind the people, men in place, of Judah. Verse 17 who were building the wall, men in place. The laborers, men in place, carried on their work with one hand supporting their load. They had a brick in one hand and one hand holding the weapon. Men in place. Verse 18, all the builders had a sword belted to their side, men in place. The trumpeteer stayed with me, men in place, to sound the alarm. That sounds like men in place to me. Men in place should always have a plan of action for their family. Verse 19, then I explained to the nobles and the officials all and all the people, the work is very spread out. You got to have a plan of action. And we are widely separated from each other along the wall. We're still working, but we separated. It's, it's spaces in the wall. When you hear the blast of the trumpet, Rush to wherever it is sounding, men in place. Then God will fight for us. When we hear the sound of the trumpet, when God calls us together, everyone comes to the same place. You heard the sound tonight. All of us gather here because we heard a sound.
Men in place always stay ready to keep from getting ready. Verse 21, and I'm getting ready to close. We work early and late. Once again, men in place always stay ready to keep from getting ready. We work early and late from sunrise to sunset. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't care how early it is, I'm going to be in place. I don't care how late it is, I'm going to stay in place. (laughs) Glory be to God. Come on now. And half the men were always on guard. Men in place. (laughs) Yeah. I also told everyone living outside the walls to stay in Jerusalem. Come on, stay in place. That way, they and their servants could help with guard duty at night and work during the day. Men in place. 23. During this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, the family, nor my servants, nor the guards, men in place who were with me, ever took off our clothes. Uh, You have to stay ready to keep from getting ready. And here we go. We carried our weapons with us at all times. Even when we went to get water. Men in place. I said men in place. Praise God. I hope that you got something out of that word for today. Amen. If you don't know who Christ is, we want to give you the opportunity to get to know him today. We want you to get to get to know Christ, which is our first principle is to know God. Amen. Bible says you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. So those are the things that you got to do. But we want to pray with you this morning, a prayer of uh, a faith prayer. Amen. So I'm going to ask that if you don't know who Christ is or you want to accept Christ into your heart, I want you to uh, say these this prayer along with me. And everybody else online, I want you all to join in as well. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for dying and for getting up again just for me. I believe that you are the Christ the son of the living God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the very first time, we want to welcome you to the kingdom of God, amen? The angels are rejoicing, but you can't stop there. You got to get into a word-based church because only the word is what's going to sustain you in these days. You need to get in a church with a man or woman of God that is teaching the word of God, amen? If you would like to join in with us, then our producer will put on the screen uh, the thing for you to be able to connect with the Life Church. Send us a little message or something. Let us know that you are online with us. Amen. And then if you would like us to help you find a church, we have no problem with that because it's not about the four walls of the life. It's about kingdom business. Amen. So contact us and let us know. Let us know how you're doing. Amen. Also, we want to ask right now that if you would like to sow a seed into this ministry, then she's put it on the screen now. These are ways that what you can give to the Life Church. Well, we pray that that, uh, whatever God puts on your heart for you to sow into this ministry, we thank God for you. Amen. So sow a seed 